Uh, have a look at my working. How did I use that angle? What did I put it into? Can you recognize this line? Do you recognize it? This is the cosine rule, right? You can know, because it says cosine, this is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Okay? Now, I don't write the formula down. Part of the reason why is because there's already an a and a b and a c in the question, and I don't want to confuse myself. So I've looked at the formula sheet, I've noticed, okay, which side is relevant relative to which angle, and so I've written down that line. Um, how does that look? Does, is that, are we okay up to this line, or do you want me to slow down? That's all right? Okay, so, yeah, question. If you end up drawing the diagram wrong, but you did the formula and the all the rest of the questions according to that diagram, would yep. you get any marks for understanding the point? How to do it? So the question was, if my diagram up here is wrong, and I do subsequent things off of the basis of that diagram, will I still get some marks, basically? Um, the short answer is, it depends. And it depends on how drastically wrong your diagram is. For example, if I draw, if I draw a really ridiculous diagram, suppose like, you know, I don't know, like the order of the things is wrong or I'm off like going in a different direction or something like that. Sometimes you can render yourself unable to solve the question. So the stuff down here, it stops making sense because you have angles that are negative and it, it, your, your working is just a bit of a mess. So it's confusing, right? If you did it inside, there's a good chance you could progress. But then what you've done is you made the question easier. So you wouldn't be able to get full marks. Because you see, I had to work to find out what that angle was. But you're just like, I know the angle. Ta -da. So it depends. I, I'm happy to look at your working individually. Okay. So I've got the angle inside the triangle. Uh, the 3 and the 8 are the sides that are around, that are about the angle. So that's what gives me a C. I've just sort of crunched from my calculator. Okay. How many people got AC? Hands up straight. Okay, thank you, hands down. Not heaps of us. So I guess this is a point where, you know, you get no help from the question in terms of what information is relevant. How do I start to step through this and work out what direction I need to go in? If you're working out a length, my advice to you is, you've got to know some other lengths in there and they've given them to you. And you'll need some angles. The trickiest part is working out which one, okay? Once you have that 9.7, it doesn't let up. This is an HSC type question, so don't expect it to be easy. Um, what is the bearing of C from A? Okay, before you look at my working, come back to the diagram. Don't look at my working. Don't look at it, because this is the important part first. Do you see what I've got up there in purple? In the top left hand corner. Do you see that? That's where I've written bearing of C from A. I want to know where this angle is that I'm calculating. Do you agree that that's the bearing of C from A? Do you see I'm measuring from up there and I'm pointing down here, okay? Once I know what I'm working out, what's this angle here? This one that I'm coloring in orange. That's 90 degrees, because it's a compass, right? He walks due uh, east, east, yeah? So in order to get the bearing, the whole purple angle, I just need to add on this little bit in between. Is that okay? So then that becomes my mission. All right, that's the side, the angle I'm after. So if I know all the sides in this triangle, that's 9.7, remember, what information can I use to work out the tiny little angle in the corner? I can use cosine rule. Um, I could use sine rule, but I try to avoid sine rule. Why is that? Do you remember? Because it could be obtuse. I mean, on, on this diagram, obviously it's not. But I sort of always default to cosine rule because it will always give me the right answer and I never need to wander, okay? Um, here I've got one, two, three sides, so there's no reason not to, okay? Uh, that's what this working looks like. I will put up this so that you can see what I'm doing. But the important thing is what I then do with this angle. Do you see I get the size inside the triangle? 53? That's not the bearing, but that is not the bearing. What have I done? Look at my final line. This line here. Yeah, that's very good. I saw the actual bearing I'm after is 90 plus this angle. So that's why I added on, and that's what gives me this bearing. Okay? How are you traveling so far? Wait, so you yeah? can use cosine with both angles and sides? 
Yes. Um, and let me have a look. Sorry, let me just remind myself. On the formula sheet, you can see that the cosine rule is written twice, uh, and it says this or this. And the first one um, is provided in the form that's for sides, and the second one is provided in the form that's for angles. So you really can use it either. Okay. And that's why we're doing this. Okay. So you can see inside the triangle, let me zoom out a little bit. I found that that tiny angle up there, I need to get up. <clears throat> this tiny angle right up here in the corner is 53. So my diagram is not heaps to scale, but this doesn't matter. I added 90 to get the bearing. So there it is, 143 degrees true. Okay. Then I have to finish off. The final question, and it is quite hard. This is, like I said, if you got a bearings question, sorry, if you got a tree question, and it was toward the beginning of the paper, um, you'd get one of these. And it'd be like, cool, okay, identify a formula, substitute, and you're done. If you get a tree question towards the end of the paper, it's going to be one of these, okay? So don't write any of this down, just watch with me, because it's all in the diagram, and then I'll put the working up at the end so you can copy everything that you want, okay? The question says, bearing of A from C. So this is the reverse of what the previous question was asking. Yeah. So I go to the diagram. And do you see me put it in here? Right? This is the bearing of A. A is over there from C. So I'm measuring from C. Right? So I start from north like I always do. And I spin all the way around and get, get this weird um, reflex angle. That's what we call this. Um, it's more than 180 degrees. It's more than 270 degrees, actually, it goes all the way around. So that's what I've got to try and find, okay? Now, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Um, I know if I went all the way around, I'd get 360, right? So if I just sort of pedal back a little bit, that'll tell me what the bearing is. I just have to work out how far back I have to go. Do you see how there's these two angles hiding in here? If I can find out what these are, then I just need to subtract them from 360 and that'll get me there. Are you with me so far? There's a lot of geometry going on. So let me revise. All the way is 360, but I don't want to go all the way. I only want to come to here. Okay? So I've got to work out what's missing from the whole 360. Okay, just look back. Do you remember at the beginning when we drew this diagram, I put this in. Do you remember what that was? What, what piece of information in the question was that? That was the bearing of C from B, right? I, I spun around and I started walking, okay? So I put a north and a north here. North lines are always going to be parallel, right? So therefore, or well, almost, between these two parallel lines, I've got these two here, which are actually co-interior. I know it doesn't look co-interior, so let me help you see it a little bit. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, there we go. Uh, there we go, there we go, okay. Can you see it now? Can you see it? Here, all the way down to here. You know how co interior is like that C? Right? Well, there's the C. It's just really squashed over and on its side. Okay? So in here, these two angles are, starts with an S. What's it called again? Supplementary. Very good. So that's why I'm doing... It's, it's getting late in the afternoon, isn't it? Um, that's why I did this. Do you see what I'm doing? That's 155. What's the other part that makes up 180? And the answer is 25. Does that mat do it look like 25? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a little angle, right? So I'll call that 25. I've got this. How do I work out this? This guy in here. Okay, now do you remember <clears throat> when I worked out this angle over here, I had to do the cosine rule. Right? Because I had one, two, three sides, I had to sweat all the way through it, and I got this angle. We didn't really any oh, but wait! I got that angle, and I've got this angle, because I just worked it out, so... Which one? This one? Uh, that was the previous question. So I had to work out this bearing. Do you remember? So, cursor rule in here. Okay, I'll show you the working again if you like. But my point is, I know what the angle is. Alright? So I subtract it from 180. Uh, this plus this plus this is 180, so you can find what that angle is, okay? Then here's my working. Okay? Do you see what I'm doing here? Do you see what I'm doing? This is inside the triangle, okay?
Okay, so I can't fit the triangle on my page, so, but you've got it in front of you, right? So ABC, BAC, and BCA, they're the angles that are all inside, and they all add up to 180, okay? I worked out these two angles in the previous questions, right? That's why this is part A, part, oh, why does that say A? That's weird, sorry, typo. Um, in the earlier parts of the question, I worked out these angles so I can use them. This is the one that I don't know. Uh, apparently when you do the subtraction, it's 12 degrees. It's little, so again, my diagrams are perfect. 12 is what I calculated. Um, I'm open to being corrected. I did do it on the exam conditions. But then, do you remember what I was gonna do with that angle? This is hard, this is, we're at the very end. Add to the 25. Yeah, so I found this is 25, this is 12, so 360 take away 25 and 12 is 300 and, I can't remember. <laughs> 323. That's the answer.